Hello, I'm going to be continuing our topic about suspense using the movie Get Out. So Get Out is a movie that was directed by Jordan Peele in 2017. The plot follows Chris Washington as he visits his girlfriend's family, the Armitages, Armitages, how that's pronounced. As he continues through his stay, the family acts in stranger and stranger, and meanwhile all the black servants are like clearly not acting well and they th this makes Chris like very suspicious of the situation he's in and eventually it's revealed that the family plans to take over his body and then make someone else his pilot so they, they're doing like, like this weird brain surgery thing where they separate his mind from his body and basically make make him work for the armitage against his will for the rest of his life all the servants in the story are were revealed, later revealed to be taken over by the grandparents, which will be important for one of our scenes I'm talking about later. There are themes of slavery and racism in this in this movie. Um, first of all, there's the slavery, obviously, the allegory, where the black people are being forced to work for the rich white people for free, and the black servants are being stripped of the, their original personality and they're only treating as, as basically property, much like how it was back in the 1800s, and then there's also the racism where the Armitages only talk about the inherent privileges of being black in the modern era, while also ignoring all of the struggles that African Americans are under in this modern era. And then finally, we see that the Armitages treat Chris only like an object that to be bitted on and used for menial labor. The composer of Get Out was Michael Abels, who's actually new to the composing scene. Jordan Peele approached him to work on the movie after hearing some of his albums. The idea was that the music was supposed to be a gospel horror, where it's supposed to mimic the music used in thrillers in the 50s and 60s, but then incorporate African American culture into the soundtrack by having gospel music to it. And we'll see some of that in the later scenes where they try to make gospel music very intense and more akin to like a cult in a way. He won many awards for his work. He won the World Soundtrack Award, the Jerry Goldsmith Award, and he was also nominated for a Crit Critics' Choice and Image Award. Now I want to start with our first scene, which is where a deer gets run over by Chris's girlfriend. Notice how, like with Knives Out, the scene starts with a jump scare, which is supposed to like shock the audience and get them in a more heightened state of agitation. And then we're going to hear some violins that grow slowly more and more pitch, which is basically going to be a lead up to what's the main piece of the song, which is going to be a harp that's a mix of conjunct and disjunct phrases. And the harp itself is going to be very moderato and tempo. Intermixed with that, we're going to hear some buzzing that I believe is either me these metal buzzing rattles that would possibly be, be attached to the harp or mirror tones that were attached to xylophones. Either way, I believe that the buzzing is coming from an African influence, which is important because I feel this gives this juxtaposition between the more traditional Western horror music and also traditional African music. So I believe this is meant to show a supposed divide between Chris and the Armitages. To continue with that theme of just ju juxtaposition, the buzzing is also very n dissonant, which clashes with the very sweet sounding harp. So it makes the song feel very beautiful, but also very eerie at the same time. Also what's important with this scene is that Chris is feeling a lot of guilt when he's looking at the deer because the deer reminds him of his mother who died after she got run over by a car. And so the fact that the deer is there laying dying in the forest, Chris is drawing those parallels and he's feeling very sad about that. And so the harp is supposed to match his somber mood.
for this next scene, we're going to see a lot more traditional horror timbres that are going to be going to be used. So high pitched strings and drums. The strings are going to be screeching, much like in Psycho, and also it ties back into the 50s, 60s horror movie homage that Michael Abels wanted to do with this movie. The melody is going to be very disjunct and high pitch, which makes sense considering it's trying to the scene is trying to mimic like Psycho, and also the harmony is going to be very in major key and dissonant. So to go back to our talk about suspense again, this is a more queer example of the music trying to hide plot elements. You are so scared of the guy running straight at you, you're not thinking critically, and then you're not thinking about, well, why is this dude running a lot? Well, if you were to think back and connect it to an earlier scene, you'd realize that, oh, when the Ar Armitage's dad was talking about how his father wanted to be a track runner that beat Jesse Owens's time. Maybe the grandfather's consciousness is inside the body of the groundskeeper, and that is right. He's running a lot because he's a track star, and he's hoping to one day get a time that can beat Jesse Owens. Another f bit of evidence for this is how the music is very Western. There are no African influences whatsoever, which is different than the scene we just saw, where there was a mix of Western African influences. So this implies that though the white person is in complete control of the groundskeeper's body. As the intensity of the scene ramps up, we get a different timbre, which is called the... Jom. Thank you. So the joms are drums that are mainly found in Africa, which is interesting to me because this ties in to what I was saying before with how the groundskeeper, when he was under control of a white influences, the scary music was all Western inspired, inspired but now that this guy is free from the from being held under the spell. Now the music is more African inspired. And so it creates this kind of struggle for control between the Armitages and then the black servants. The melody is very disjunct and the pitch is very high, which coincides with the intensity of the scene. As per usual, it helps to create suspense with what the man is saying. The tempo is also very allegro, and then the harmony is in major key. While this score doesn't really carry carry the scene at all, it's mainly used as like a background compliment. I still thought it was a cool detail how the timbre used showed who was in control. Get out. And finally, to round things out, we're going to get an example of this gospel horror in the surgery scene. So the timbre for the surgery scene is you're going to be hearing this chorus that's chanting probably in Latin. We're going to get drums, and we're also going to get a cello, I believe. What we are talking about today with how the cello is supposed to mimic the human voice. The harmony is going to be very dissonant, the melody is going to be disjunct, and the pitch is going to be very low. And finally, the tempo is going to be moderato to adagio. All of this is supposed to give the scene a very cult-like feeling, comparing the surgery to like a ritual and comparing the armitages to these crazy fanatics, which kind of ties into the genre of Get Out being this horror comedy, in a sense. The giving this, what seems like a very boring surgery, this very grandiose feeling, which could be seen as an example of 
and empathetic music. However, can also be seen as an example of empathetic music because Sir Chris, this is this big, scary thing that's going to ruin his life forever. Another possible theory to this music is that the score is meant to show the struggle between Chris and the Armitages. Like what we were talking about before, this scene has a lot of Western influences with the drums, the cello, and all the other traditional horror movie tropes with the music, with the tense music so far. However, you could argue that the chorus chanting is an allusion to gospel music, which during the 1800s, when many African Americans were enslaved, they used gospel music as a way to express themselves, so the music gave them levity to their lives, while also giving the African Americans still their own culture. So this could be a massive allusion to the idea that while the Armitages think they have complete control over Chris in this scenario, Chris still has the upper hand, which can be later seen when he escapes from his bondage. Oh.